Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award Ceremony. Our host for today's ceremony is the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy A. George. Accompanying General George is Mr. Richard Diamondstein of the General Douglas MacArthur Foundation. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Staff Sergeant Keenan McCarter from the United States Army Chorus and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Gun Lee, Deputy, Office of the Pentagon Chaplain. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held as the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red Bursting in gay proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in prayer. Almighty God, our eternal Father, we lift our heart in sincere thanksgiving for the blessings of life, for friends and family, and for our beautiful country. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to recognize these young officers who were selected for today's award ceremony. All of them in following the legacies which General MacArthur stood for, duty, honor, and country, have displayed a true commitment to Army values, to their leaders, subordinate, and peers. Please continue to grant these leaders with your wisdom to follow what is right and the courage to act when called upon to defend our great nation. O oh God, bless them in the days to come so that their service to our country will not fail and that they will lead the next generation on. For your glory and for the good of our nation, we pray this in your most holy name, amen. Please be seated. The General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award is presented annually to recognize company grade officers who demonstrate the ideals of duty, honor, and country. Today, the 2021 General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award is presented to 28 officers in the active Army, Army Reserve, and Army National Guard, who display the leadership traits epitomized by General MacArthur. Throughout a broad spectrum of positions, these officers displayed true commitment to Army values, unequaled technical and tactical competence, a mature understanding of their leaders, subordinates, and peers, and they exercised influence and leadership traits required for building cohesive teams that support the Army. These officers are the leaders of our future. The MacArthur Leadership Award is presented by both the Department of the Army and the General Douglas MacArthur Foundation. The Army is pleased to host this event and appreciates the MacArthur Foundation's active role in promoting junior officer leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, General George. All right, well, it's great to see everybody. I was just asking uh, last, I guess the last couple, this we have not been able to have in person 
or with families. So um, a big congratulations to all of us to actually be able to meet um, together. I think we've done some that were virtual and some um, that we didn't have families. So it's great to see um, all the families and, and friends that are here with us. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with a story and hopefully uh, um, the folks over here to my left that are in those front two rows that we're honoring will appreciate it. And one day when I was a, was a division commander, my brigade commander, or one of my brigade commanders came up to Sergeant Major and I and said, hey, sir, Sergeant Major, we got this amazing company that's out you know, downrange and they're just doing amazing things and they got this squad live fire and I really want you to go check them out. Disciplined, you know, you'll just be really impressed with it. They're innovative and I think you should go out and check them out. So I said, okay, sure. Get a call later in the day and they said, hey, that's their last day out in the field. They really want you to come out. You know, looking down at Ron, we've all gotten that before, like hurry up and get out there. So I said, sure, we'll get out there. We'll go the, we'll go tomorrow morning, we'll get up and go. And um, as typical, something happened and we got, we were running a couple minutes late, but we finally got in our Humvee and we're heading down range and I was down range at Fort Carson. Um, and I know you guys, uh, everybody in here wearing this uniform can visualize going down the gravel road and we see it in a distance and we see the range where we're gonna turn off onto. Red flag is up, so obviously there's a live fire. So we said, okay, we got the right spot. And there's two soldiers that are standing there. And you know, they're in front of the gate and they wanna make sure that uh, they control everybody that comes in. So we start, we slow down, we come to a stop. And one of the soldiers comes running up and he had his hand out. He come, comes, up to the, comes up to our side door and our driver drops the window. And he said, hey, you got a general in there? And the, dri <laughs> and, and the driver says, uh, yeah, he's, he's right here. And he goes, well, he better hurry. The CO and the first sergeant are down there waiting on him. <laughs> so I just, I, I tell everybody that story to remind and for all of us who, who know that, that the people who really um, have an impact in people's lives, and I just was, had the opportunity to, to tell these folks that, um, how lucky we are to have them and how lucky their soldiers were to have them because the people that uh, really have impact that you remember are the NCOs, uh, company grade officers and warrant officers. And I can remember from all those groups, um, whether when I was a young trooper or a young um, lieutenant, I'll remember, you know, you always remember your company commander. So again, I just wanna um, thank you for the positive impact uh, up front. Um, that you've had on soldiers, and then when you have that impact, I know you also have a positive impact on families. And being a great leader takes energy, and I wanna thank you for what you put into the energy and commitment that you put into doing that, and I know you guys um, will continue to do that. Now, it's been a couple of days since I was a captain, um, but when I was considering what to stay, say, I started thinking back to my company grade years specifically to the year 1996. So, and I'm, I'm looking around right now and I can tell you there are folks in the room that had a lot more hair back then. I know I certainly did. Um, so some things were definitely different in 1996. Uh, for instance, the song Macarena was a top hit. So some people who remember that one. Um, and we didn't have to worry about getting soldiers off their cell phones in the field back then. We did have cell phones back then, for anybody who's wondering, um, but they were comparably low tech. Um, the flip phone actually had just come out in 1996, but what I remember the most were those three pound bricks that we called mobile phones. From a strategic perspective, things were a little different too. The national security strategy in 1996 was focused on regional conflicts around the world, specifically ethnic violence. The Army had recently been involved in conflicts in Somalia, Haiti, and Bosnia, to name just a few. There was a lot going on, but there were no near-peer threats like there are today. And you might be wondering why I'm going on about uh, 1996 and talking about 1996. Well, in 1996, I was in your shoes, actually, receiving a MacArthur Award. And speaking today at this ceremony, 
um, has made me reflect on the 27 years since I was in this audience. And as I look back, I realize that a lot has changed, but honestly, even more hasn't changed. In particular, the things that make the Army successful have not changed. Things like young leaders teaching, coaching, and mentoring our soldiers through counseling and leader development programs. Company grade officers becoming experts on the basics and training their soldiers to be experts too. Captains and young warrants who are adaptive, creative, courageous, and committed. Young officers who are focused on building strong teams and start with setting a respectful and mission-focused culture. That's what made the Army successful in 1996, and that's what makes our Army successful today. No matter how high-tech, over-the-horizon, and autonomous the U.S. Army gets, those foundational elements of leadership still set us apart, and it makes us the premier ground force around the world. And you all embody that success. You've excelled in your jobs, and I know you will continue to influence many, many more soldiers as you move forward. Again, like I told you, I've looked through your bios, um, and if anybody, you guys get an opportunity to do that, I mean, it's really amazing, um, this group that we have over here. Um, but the diversity of this group represents just how expansive and complex the Army mission is, and that's one thing that jumped out at me just with everything that we've got going on um, just with these uh, young officers that are over here. But you all have a lot in common as well. Um, you have outstanding records in your career field. Um, and again, I'm impressed with the hard work and grateful that our future of our Army is in your hands. And then second, you've demonstrated commitment to excellence, and in particular, those foundational leadership tenets that we talk about with uh, MacArthur that make our Army the best in the world. Okay, I wanted to also um, recognize, uh, I think, the, what's really important about getting people places, and we talk about a lot of this when we uh, get promoted or we do certain things, um, and that's our family. So I want to take just an opportunity, and I'm going to ask all of these in the front two rows, um, all of our awardees to stand up and turn around and and they're going to join me in giving all of our family that are here and all the friends a big round of applause because you don't um, get places. The military can be a, a complex life and you have to require, uh, you have to um, depend on friends and family, I know, are absolutely critical. So I want you guys all stand up and we're going to thank your family together and turn around. Thank you guys. Okay, I did that for you because I get in trouble all the time for not doing that enough, so. All right, so uh, to be honest, I was thinking that uh, about the, again, way back and uh, what I remember most about receiving the MacArthur Award, and then nobody probably wants to hear this, but um, was not necessarily the ceremony, but was being able to come to DC with my wife I think it was our first time we took a trip. It was the first time I'd been in the Pentagon, first time we came um, to travel solo since we'd had kids, so first time out um, without kids. And um, one more piece of advice, I did make a comment um, to my wife that I said this felt a little bit like a mini honeymoon. I've never lived that down, so if any of you guys are, if any of you guys are thinking about that, don't, don't say it. So again, uh, congratulations to all of you guys on a, on a job well done. Um, you've demonstrated the commitment general, of General MacArthur's famous watchwords, duty, honor, country. And I just, I'll repeat something that I just told this group here in the, in the Patriot Room. General MacArthur served 52 years in the Army. And most of these over here, folks, these awardees over here have been in for eight years or so. Um, but I did tell them that by accepting this award, they're committing to following his example. <laughs> so they're about 15% of the way through their commitment. So I know in closing, 
um, to all of you, keep up the momentum, keep finding ways to improve our formation, keep spreading the good news about the Army. You know how wonderful a place the Army is and how many opportunities you have. Please share that with uh, young folks that are out there um, that, that all need to know that the Army is just a great organization because of the great people. Thank you. Thank you, General George. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Diamondstein. Thank you, General. Uh, to the awardees, family members, friends, and distinguished guests, welcome. I'm honored to be here today on behalf of the General Douglas MacArthur Foundation for this very meaningful and special occasion. I enjoyed meeting a number of you last night at the reception and have continued to enjoy talking to you throughout this event. The General Douglas MacArthur Foundation was established in 1962 in Norfolk, Virginia to memorialize the life and achievements of General Douglas MacArthur throughout and beyond his storied career. His credo, duty, honor, and country continues to be relevant today and for future generations of Americans. As part of the legacy of General uh, MacArthur, our organization continues to learn, interpret, and present many aspects of his life and the impact that he had on our nation and the world. The MacArthur Memorial took on additional value to our extended community during the COVID epidemic by providing many remote learning operation, opportunities to the school age population. We continue to experience growth and interest in what we have to offer. I would encourage you to visit our website and spend time learning more about General MacArthur through our extensive podcast series. Colonel Davis and I also extend an open invitation for you to visit our Norfolk Museum. Today we are here to honor 28 warrant and commission Army officers with the MacArthur Leadership Awards. The Army's senior leadership has identified you as effective leaders, showing a strong commitment to General MacArthur's ideals of duty, honor, and country. As I learned about the selection process last evening, you are truly members of an elite group, our country's leaders of, the, of today and the future. Our country is grateful to have your commitment in this unstable world of today. On a personal note, my father, a proud Army veteran, passed away just over two months ago. He served in the 245th Tank Battalion in Korea, assigned to the 45th Infantry Division. He did not like to talk much about his experience, but occasionally reminisced about the brutal winters. However, he was intensely proud of his service to his country throughout his life. Through my father's eyes, I have a high level of respect for you and your family's sacrifice protecting our freedom and way of life. So congratulations, God bless you, your families, and our great nation. Thank you for your service. Ladies and gentlemen, General George, joined by Mr. Diamondstein, will now present the 2021 General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Awards. Today, each recipient will receive a bust of General MacArthur, sculpted exclusively for this ceremony by Zetas Ferdakis, a member of the National Academy of Design. Each bust is cast in bronze, mounted on a walnut pedestal, and weighs approximately 15 pounds. This year's General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award recipients are Captain Alan J. Armstrong, South Dakota Army National Guard. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 2, Mitchell J. Barrett. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Mitchell J. Barrett, U.S. Army Forces Command. <laughs> Chief 
Captain Trevor M. Barton, U.S. Army Forces Command. Captain Joshua R. Blizzard, South Carolina Army National Guard. <laughs> Captain Winston E. Bolt, U.S. Army Forces Command. Captain Paul A. Clampett, Tennessee Army National Guard. <laughs> Captain Justin L. Counterman, U.S. Army Reserve Command. Captain John H. Dufresne, U.S. Army Forces Command. <laughs> Captain Carter J. Elms, U.S. Army Special Operations Command. Captain Sarah N. Epperson, U.S. Army Europe and Africa Command. <laughs> Captain Eric E. Arena, Sr., U.S. Army Reserve Command. Captain Taylor B. Fry, Oregon Army National Guard. <laughs> Captain Jeremy P. Ham, Nebraska Army National Guard. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Catherine L. Heckreth, California Army National Guard. <laughs> Captain Robert H. Hendren, U.S. Army Forces Command. Captain Sarah J. Higgins, U.S. Army Material Command. <laughs> Sarah! 
Captain Aloysius J. Hunter, U.S. Army Reserve Command. Captain Brett R. Kruger, U.S. Army Forces Command. <laughs> Captain Lorenzo Lorente II, U.S. Army Reserve Command. Captain Aaron A. Malden, U.S. Army Forces Command. <laughs> Captain Chantel L. Moore, Arkansas Army National Guard. Captain Sarah G. Mullins, U.S. Army Reserve Command. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 2, Ashley L. Plymail, U.S. Army Reserve Command. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Andre K. Richards, U.S. Army Forces Command. Captain David J. Rodriguez, U.S. Army Special Operations Command. <laughs> Captain Olivia L. Schretzman, U.S. Army Forces Command. Captain Christian L. Wardinsky, U.S. Army Forces Command. <laughs> Captain Charles J. Young, U.S. Army Reserve Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please give all of today's awardees a big round of applause. Thank you, General George and Mr. Diamondstein. Please stand and join in the singing of the Army Song, led by Staff Sergeant McCarter. The words can be found inside your program.
March along, sing a song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's our 